I'm Michael Shaw. I'm the publisher of the nonprofit media literacy and visual literacy site, Reading the Pictures. Um, we confused everybody badly by changing our name from Bad News Notes. So we're those guys. Um, we also published the Reading the Pictures Salon, where we bring photographers and editors uh, and visual educators together to analyze um, the media depiction of the top stories of the day. Uh, you can find us on, on the web, on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and now we're on Instagram. So we're just kind of riffing everywhere. Um, I am incredibly honored to, to be in the presence of these photographers. They're, they're favorites, I admire their work, and uh, and really honored that they could be here today with us. Uh, they're still trying to figure out what I want them to do, so I think that's you, that's great, because <laughs> we are about to be It's all about reading, reading images. So um, let me uh, introduce my um, fellow non-photographer on the panel first. Um, Lori Novak is an artist and professor of photography and imaging at Tisch School of the Arts, uh, NYU, and associate prof faculty at the Hemisphere Institute of Performance and Politics. Uh, her pho photographs, installations, and internet projects explore issues of memory, politics, and shifting cultural meanings of photographs. Uh, and then uh, I want to introduce the photographers, but I want to do that in a little bit different way. And I want to introduce it in terms of um, their approach to campaign imagery. So uh, here we go. Uh, Mark Abramson. Uh, is a freelance photographer. His campaign credits in, for this campaign cycle include Harper's, The New Yorker, Time, and Wired, amongst many others. Uh, and he creates um, political commentary through the use of multiple exposures. Uh, he often combines uh, personality portraits with pointed symbolism, highlighting elements of wealth, class, religion, and regional setting. <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> uh, and Scott Brower, Scott, is a freelance photographer from Boston. His campaign credits include Esquire, Mother Jones, The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal, and um, quite a long list of others in this campaign cycle. Um, Scott applies a unique palette, applying lightness or whimsy to an election that has been anything but. He has been heavily focused on retail politics, on citizen engagement, as well as the day-to-day -day campaign rituals. A lot of pretzels and things, yeah. <laughs> he has also demonstrated, and I'm really, we, we should all be proud about uh, this, he has also demonstrated how self-assignment and long-term commitment can be a very successful strategy. Uh, Landon Norderman, I know he's fighting a little bit of, uh, you know, it's like the tea and honey treatment today. Let's we'll see how long, how he holds up. Uh, he is a successful documentary photographer, very successful. Um, he was shooting mostly for time, this campaign cycle. Uh, his high profile uh, in this election is further evidence. It's not your typical campaign or campaign year. Um, his commentary comes through emphasis on style and fashion color, and satire. He represents politics as performance, and he makes heavy use of irony with an emphasis on wealth, ego, and political celebrity. <laughs> We're already in it. <laughs> uh, and then, um, last but not least, uh, Hillary Swift. And, uh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, Hillary Swift is a freelance photographer. She has been shooting the campaign for the New York Times. Um, she, especially amongst this group, um, or in compared to the group, has a more editorial style, um, less interested in surface or performance or um, the uh, self-consciousness of the citizen than a more spontaneous, uh, an in more spontaneous, authentic moments of humor, passion, and poignancy. Also, she has a special ability to see the campaign through the eyes of younger people from millennials on down. <laughs> That's what I was doing. 
Uh, I should add that all photographers have taken maximum advantage of Instagram, uh, and the platform plays very well to their respective approaches. Um, so, as you could maybe already gather, our goal this evening is a little different. Um, so, we're not interested so much in a general discussion about the campaign, uh, or the photographer's process, or their experience being where they happen to be when they made these images. We're interested in reading a picture, we're interested in the story this one photo is telling. Uh, we're interested in the setting, the body language, the compositions, the symbolism, what makes, what, 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 what tells that story, what, what brings that story together in one image. So we are going to um, read, hopefully, uh, eight photos, and we're going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, and we'll, we'll see, hopefully we'll be able to stay in the, you know, the time constraint, but we'll go, um, each photographer will go through one time, each photo, and then we'll do another round. Um, so, uh, if you want to see the pictures in more detail, by the way, because we really wanted to study them, uh, they are all on a, a slideshow in an, our post about the event tonight. Um, so it's bit.ly uh, forward slash pvpix. So it's bit.ly forward slash pvpix. If you want to really see the pictures, um, you know, more closely. So um, we're going to start with the first photograph. Uh, this was taken by Mark Abramson. And the caption reads, Presidential hopeful Donald Trump speaks to a crowd of supporters at a campaign rally in Milford, New Hampshire, ahead of the New Hampshire primary, February 2, 2016. And um, my question for Mark, very simply, is uh, because it's a much more intentional process putting two pictures together than just like what came out of this one photo you captured. So my question is, you know, what were you trying to achieve? Um, uh, or what are you trying to say at layering these two photos together? Um, you know, are, we, are we looking at the great and powerful Oz? Um, is this a death mask? And, and, and then, in terms of the two talking to each other, what does it say about, or what, it, what do you see from what you did in terms of Trump's relationship with his followers and the followers' relationship to Trump? So, this image, uh, I took it, yeah, right, right around the beginning when I, when I started shooting the campaigns, I guess, in January, and then I took it right, right before um, the New Hampshire primary went off. And uh, for me, well, it's a, it's a triple exposure, so there's, there's two layers um, of the crowd and one layer of, of Trump's face. And for me, it, it really is an image that speaks to the power of this almighty man that we we in the media have made out to be this, this huge figure. And for me, I had never seen him in person like that. Um, and I'd never seen his crowds from above uh, in that way. And it's, it's such a vast, uh, it's such a vast array of people that are there. Um, and it's, on, on top of that, it's, it's, it really, for me, it speaks to this, this guy who's, who's, who's being propped up on, on some sort of uh, pedestal, um, you know, and, it's, and he's sitting on top. Um, and really, I just wanted to, to blend the emotion that, was, that I was feeling. And, you know, the, the chaos that, that occurs at these campaigns is, is mind-blowing for me. Um, and I just didn't know how to show it other than in this kind of way where all these different elements are, are coming together in this one place in my head. Um, and, and that's kind of the idea behind the blending, um, to, to really show the, the really the, the crowd, but in an abstract sort of way. Um, it's, it's not even about Trump, it's not about the people there, it's about this, this power moment that's, that's occurring. So but when we think about Trump, or at least when I think about Trump, we think I think about someone who's hyperkinetic, and here there's a kind of a dreamy quality to him, or like almost a zen quality for him. I, I, I have trouble 
imagining this guy sleeping. <laughs> you know, but, but alone closing his eyes. So um, I just think that's a really fascinating choice. You know, so what? Well, I think we see a lot of images of Trump, right? We've seen a lot of different faces that he makes. Um, for me, what I really like about this particular face is he's actually, it's almost as if he's in this calm state between between the dream. And that, and that kind of is what I've been trying to do with this work period. It's this, it's this cross section between the the awake and the, the dream or the nightmare, <laughs> really. Um, and, you know, he, he, he's having this very poignant moment, this very quiet moment, uh, while all his fans are waiting for him. Um, and it's, it's this cross section between um, this chaos, but also this, this, this moment of shining for him. Um, so I, I kind of like the fact that you see him in a different light than you usually do. Because there is such a vast array of images of his face and of him that can't be this. Um, he's this Mr. Man, in a way. He's everywhere, but he's nowhere. And that's, and that's part of it. The image, too, is this deconstruction um, of, of reality, I suppose. It's, it's the abstract. Uh, so it's like everywhere and nowhere, and he's like this apparition. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the in between dream and, I guess, nightmare. If, if you look at um, a, a lot of. Uh, I've, I've always looked at um, old Soviet um, posters that were done by Soviet artists in the communist era, and it's, it's something that's always fascinated me. And it's, it, it's kind of this look at um, that style where it's, it's a deconstruction of elements um, in a graphic kind of way. Um, you know, work by uh, artists like Lozhenka and, and, and such. Kind of the idea, at least with this particular image. Great. All right. Thanks, Mark. Um, <laughs> so, the panel, you know, if you have thoughts or you know, camera thoughts, feel, feel free. But I want to let's move on to the next one. Um, this uh, shot was taken by Sky, uh, and the caption is um, Democratic presidential candidate and former first lady. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton speaks to a crowd at a rally in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, and there's a lot going on in this photo. Uh, and there's, I think, a lot of books in it also. Um, and you were telling me also that you were telling me that you've already caught a few from Reddit. So this, I guess, some of this territory is not new for you, but maybe for us. You know, she's she's photographing behind, so we have like a whole lot of issues. There, in terms of her representation, we've got this pink and blue thing going on. Um, and then we have this kind of power dimension to it in terms of uh, her command of the crowd. But then, in terms of the crowd, you have two different versions in a way, because you have on the, on, on the right side, you have this adulation. But then, if you look at the People, if you just only had one as put the other, if you look on the left side, you see people that look a lot more ambivalent. So there's like, it's a really complicated photo, actually. Um, so come back to the question. What do you think that you made? Uh, what, what are you seeing here? And then how do you think about it in relation to, I guess, a lot of the feedback you've gotten already on the photo? Um, well, I wish I had all these uh, high-minded ideas when I took the picture. The Secret Service just wouldn't let me go any further in front. <laughs> um, there's a stage that you could be very on, uh, but no. But but this is exactly the kind of thing that I was trying to show with my project. I was I, I, I was not interested in um, uh, examining or critiquing any particular candidate, but more about the, uh, the process of, of, of campaigning. And for me, it was really important just to show what happens behind the scenes. Um, this is at this uh, really beautiful uh, New England um, colonial style high school. Um, it looks like just the perfect picture high school, and that's what's directly behind her, as well as a couple of uh, American flags. And that's exactly the image that she wants to be um, portrayed, and that's why the riser is directly opposite her. That's that, you know, she got this look like this patriotic hero. Um, but you know, it could be Hillary, it could be any candidate standing there, and that's what, I mean, this is just what politics looks like. You see the teleprompter, you see the, the, the water glass that's hidden, um, you see all these. There's a really hot day, and, and, and you get this idea that, um, 
uh, there's a lot of uh, like it's an endurance test trying to trying to do these events, and you know you see this incredible energy from her, um, but you see uh, you know people on the left that are totally maybe not bored but overheated or or just not engaged in the way that that, that guy down on the right is. Um, yeah, it's just really important for me to show us. I hadn't thought about the, the pink versus the blue, but it's kind of interesting, especially when you contrast it with the, the bunting um, on the, the, the crowd control barriers. Um, so it's not exactly red, white, and blue, it's a little bit muted. Um, and, and I don't know, I'm happy she chose that color because it, it, it worked perfectly that day in the picture. Um, but you are I'm sorry. Oh no, I was going to say I got a lot of heat for this picture because I mean, you're showing Hillary Clinton's backside. Um, and uh, for some people, I've gotten very different reactions from this. Um, a couple of people I know who are strong Republicans are like, oh, yeah, that's the only part where you should see a lot of kicker in the backside, you know? Um, and, and, but then other people, they, 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 they see her as this, you know, commanding presence. You don't even need to see her face. You, don't, you know, you just know this is who she is and you can get an idea of her, of her commitment, her values, her strength as a campaigner um, through this image. So people can read it in very different ways. Um, this picture was um, called by Time Magazine one of the top 100 photos of 2015, which elaborated well, yesterday. Um, but uh, I got a lot of heat from it um, because I, I, I photographed um, this entire project in this very unflattering way. Um, and, and, and the idea is, is not to present the, the candidates as they present themselves, but to uh, just look a little bit deeper behind this highly polished veneer um, that, is, uh, that is how they present themselves to the world. Um, and look behind and next to and underneath and, and, and with this image that they present. Yeah. Lori, did you have some thoughts about the, the questions? As I told Michael before, I spent in thinking about this panel of the day, really looking at campaign pictures, which I would not advise anyone to do. And, um, I just have to preface that I don't even sometimes know when to enter in some of these conversations because as a woman and a feminist, the way Hillary has been portrayed visually in the media has been misogynist, sexist, and it's, you know, I don't even know where to begin. And I think, in a way, knowing that it's not what, you know, I don't know what goes on when people are making, you know, images, what you would have to release to people, what the photo editors are choosing, what gets out there, what gets spread around the internet. But it's just a question I want to throw, you know, throw in here. Um, I've looked at a lot of campaign pictures over the years. You know, when Obama was photographed from the back, it was a very different kind of picture. Um, so, you know, and then it's interesting because it's like posterity versus posterior, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and it, it's also it's interesting to me as you read this picture, you know, as you were talking to people on the left before, and I'm thinking it's a hot day, you looked away. You know, as you said that, I'm thinking, oh, I better look at, at the panel the whole time, otherwise people in the photographs will think I'm bored. You know, that it's this performing <laughs> for, uh, for the camera all the time that is so much a part of our life now that it's part of every picture, so I don't know how to specifically say it, but I just have to get that out to start with. So. Can, I, can, I just, can I just add something? I think um, uh, the idea of performing from camera, we all get so used to, so it's our job to break through that, and that's what I think Scott Stone would have done this photograph. Thanks. Um, yeah, that's the goal. That's exactly what I was trying to get through. Um, I am sensitive to the, the, the issues about um, portrayals of, uh, of women, absolutely. I got I got um, uh, photographed Carly Fiorina quite a bit. Um, some people were angry at some of the pictures I did kind of close up to her face. Um, and yeah, it's absolutely something that needs to be discussed, I guess. And I, I don't have a good answer. Um, I don't feel this picture is. I photographed other politicians. You know, it's not it's not just because I said it's not because it's a woman that I photographed it this way. And of course this was also, you know, I'm a, I don't I don't pay attention to all these conspiracy theories. This was well before a lot of questions about her health, I feel that like, really gained traction in, 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 in the media. So um, while I am focusing on her body, I feel it's more about all the stuff that's surrounding her and especially this like really powerful emotion. Which is, doing, which is not unique to her, it's something that all politicians do. And so, like I said, this could be any candidate. Yeah, no, I agree. And 
I think as a photographer, you can't totally control. But uh, absolutely. Is. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a complex photo. It's that, you know, at the same time that you have, you know, these two different reads on the audience and two completely different sentiments, you also have stereotype, physical stereotype and gender, but then at the same time you have, you know, this kind of her commanding this power where almost she looks like she's leading the orchestra. So like all that's happening at the same time. You know? One other thing I'd say is it's really easy to photograph politicians in a really negative way. Uh, every election cycle you see these uh, photo galleries that, that people do of uh, um, uh, politicians at that Iowa State Fair or the corn dogs or you know, something like that. And it's just this uh, almost prurient, you know, really negative uh, portrayal of these people and feel that they uh, deserve a little bit better from, uh, um, from the media, from, from, from photographers. Um, and the last one's going with that. <laughs> but, but, the, but, but the idea is that um, I'm, like there were half the audience was behind me. Half the audience saw exactly this view. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and we were all there for, for like two hours waiting for her to arrive and waiting for the three or four speeches before she got there. So that's a little bit about what I'm hearing in the sun, it's from Shade, um, and we're listening to her 13-song playlist over and over and over again. It's awful. Um, but and that's a little bit about what you see on the left. Um, yeah, but then, that's, that's more how I read it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then there's that guy who, with his hands clasped, and he's looking like he's looking the same. Um, and he was like that for the entire time. Like, he, he, he was just speaking, and just wow. couldn't take my eyes off of it. Wow, that's great. That's great. Um, so let's move on. Um, and uh, I, I gave a lecture the other night, and I was talking about visual language as language, and this photo was a prime example. Uh, and I do think we're living in a much more visual culture, so, but, but I, I really want to ask Landon, and I know I like kind of vexed him when I told him what my strategy was tonight, but, um, you know, how do you read this? What does this, you know, what, what does this mean to you? Like, now that, you know, it's out, it's circulated, we've been using it as the lead image to, out to promote the, the panel, um, you know, how much, for example, is about having fun at a totally tense convention where the young people were almost up in, you know, up in, in, in arms? And how much is it about, say, like the social media and the downside of social media, just like where we live in this culture where everything is like an opinion poll, you know, it's just, we vote things up, we vote things down, and then like, bring the next thing on. Um, <laughs> wow, I'm not, I'm not sure how how to answer this, but this this was actually maybe might be some context that will help. Can you guys hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so this is actually in the Facebook lounge uh, at the DNC, and so they had a little booth where you could be photographed in a fake Oval Office, and, and they gave you, uh, you know, the emojis and stuff. And I guess. Um, uh, I'm drawn to it because it's just another example of the, of the sort of the performance of the artifice. And they're not really discussing politics, they're just sort of celebrating the celebration. And um, and then, you know, when I went in there, I'm not really looking for anything specific. I heard about the Oval Office, so I wanted to see what it looked like because I thought it could lead to a photograph. Um, but you're really yeah. drawn to the artificiality, and you kind of blast it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps this was already, you know, kind of did a lot of the work for you mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in terms of, you know, people being living symbols. And I, I, I do think that's true. I like the idea of, uh, you know, the reason people come to these things is to express their your feelings, I guess, about um, whatever it is. I mean, I, I find this all sort of similar. I mean, we're all here talking about photography because we love photography, right? They're there because they, they love politics. So I think that's kind of funny. And, um, but how to actually photograph that is maybe harder than, than it looks. So I'm kind of looking for windows where I can show that pure sort of celebration of pain, like if you love politics, we're here to support our candidate. Did you, it, in a lot, I mean, 
<clears throat> you haven't seen, I'm not sure if you've seen that many of Landon's pictures from the campaign, but in a way, I wonder, I was thinking about this before, but I wonder, if, would you agree that a lot of those pictures are and what they're representing um, uh, are people acting out? Um, well, in, in this case, they're, they're acting out, but not, not in all of them. I, I, I think sometimes uh, I'm just looking for moments that to me are just honest and human. It's just that they're sort of wrapped in this whole idea of celebration of whatever it is, in this case, politics. Uh, and youth. And, and youth. And youth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, certainly in, in, in this one. Um, I mean, it's great. Well, you can't tell how many told anybody is in that photo. That's true. Well, you know, I actually skipped the uh, caption. I, I wasn't planning to do it in a way. You know, I guess that's part of the strategy because, you know, once you know it's in the Facebook lounge and, you know, you know, you know a lot of people, you don't start thinking about it that's the ball and you know it, you know, they just hand this stuff out to you. But what, do you think? Uh, what I really love about this picture is that um, for so many people, um, the politicians and policies represent um, get through the campaign process get reduced to this very basic level. Um, and you see um, here Hillary's face is at the exact same level as these um, emoji icons. And I mean, you, you, you might as well, you know, let's say there's a Facebook discussion about Black Lives Matter or, or, or gun violence or whatever. It might as well be like a Trump face that you can click or a Hillary face that you can click because for so many people that would just represent everything. And it's, it's a, this distillation of, of, of people's identity and emotions and ideas as it relates to sort of this, this political battle that's going on. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a nice segue actually to uh, the next photo and to Hillary's picture because uh, in that last shot, you know, we have. Put them in a mask, and then, and then everyone seems to be at least critics of her are so fixated about you know how much we know her or we don't know her, as opposed to that we get some kind of an image of representation. And what I and so this picture was taken at the Juniors Deli in Brooklyn. Yeah. And uh, or Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, Juniors. Is that what it was? I'm not sure, because I took up Instagram and it really abbreviated. Yeah. It was just Hillary, um, hashtag cheesecake, <laughs> actually. But, um, you know, it made me think about, like, people talking about Hillary incessantly, or at least, again, her critics, seeing her as cold and calculating, you know, in every move she makes. And so this is about making a decision. Um, and it just made me wonder if that was just, and you also don't see her this, relaxed and, and the smile, natural smile as opposed to the bug eyes and things, things you tend to see. So just, and I, and I was just wondering because of all that baggage, you know, if it makes this photo even better. Um, so again, I know I threw you the curveball also, you know, earlier in terms of what we wanted you to do, but, you know, what, what do you see in, 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 this, in this photo and what, you know, what, what happened? What came, what came back? Well, I, I suppose I, it is, it is her more relaxed. Often, frequently, she's all, um, you know, uh, very calculated, as you say, and like on stage and even composed and knows exactly which facial expression she's going to do. But in this situation, it was, it was us in a giant scrum kind of around her, but she was still speaking with, with, the, with the folks on her left and her right. And, and um, to me, I think, it, particularly at the time, it was before Bernie's endorsement of her, you know, like she was still kind of like figuring out like maybe which way she was gonna go um, with a lot of different issues. Um, and, and it was, I don't know, like I always saw her at like these, these, these big events, so it was fun to see her at something more intimate and, and more personal. Um, Were you trying to convey something in 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 terms of who she really is, or, or maybe like she's like a, a human? You know, everybody's got to choose what kind of cheesecake they want. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I like cheesecake. I didn't go for either of those, but I heard they were great. Um, 
But like in something that she said before we, we photographed her, um, she wouldn't eat the cheesecake in front of us. Because she's like, I know what you do when I try to eat food, you know? And I wouldn't want anyone photographing me eating cheesecake. Please don't, if we're ever sitting down for a pie. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but she did eat the cheesecake afterwards. Um, I think she had a little bit of peach. Was what we were told on the on the bus. <laughs> but you, you, but you did feel like this was her. That she's much looser, and has more of a sense of humor than. Oh yeah. And, 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 but you, I think you really captured it. It's really I think a, a, a wonderful and and I I think we can see unusual photo. It seems like you really captured that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I just have a question, Michael. You have followed campaigns, you know, much more than I have over the years. This conversation about not knowing the real Hillary, has it been around any other politician? I mean, Trump, we cannot, I mean, he's an exception, but some of the others who are, were just as hard as controlling them. Sorry, I mean, some of the broken record, but I need to interject it. Well, I mean, you looked at campaigns and campaign photos as part of the Yes, but I've noticed the, when the, the discussion, because I think it's always been this way. I don't think she's any different than anybody else. No, I, I, I agree. And, um, you know, I think we could perhaps have the same conversation about Barack Obama, but because he's so loose and so comfortable in front of the ca in camera, mm -hmm. but some, sometimes I refer to him as the Truman Show. Um, mm -hmm. And it's that, you know, I, I think that he still like knows that he has to present mm -hmm. a particular image he's very good at. I don't, I wonder a lot about in Hillary's case how much it is a gender uh, argument, and I also worry because there's so much attention on Trump and how you know provocative he is that we haven't really had the opportunity to talk about you know mm -hmm. how much the critique of Hillary or how much the resistance to Hillary is because or gender or the way that you know we pursue you know, women in society and, and all of that. So I, I the answer to your question is even crazy for that. I said yes with an explanation at point. There, there's a um a, a, in tomorrow's well I guess it fits in tomorrow's paper, but in the Sunday review, um, there's an article that, that about Hillary Clinton's angry face and it's actually reporting on mm -hmm. Um, social psychology research of when they show pictures of men and women um, to people and how they read them, which is very much, it's, it's all about reading the pictures, so I highly recommend that everybody um, read that. It's already mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so let's jump to the next one. We'll, we'll go back to Mark. And um, this photo, if I can describe this right, they've got the multiple exposure. We have um, in the foreground is a photograph of uh, Marco Rubio's wife. And it was at Rubio headquarters. And this was the night of the, um, the election in Florida, where he subsequently withdrew from the race. And there's a, a photo on the wall in the headquarters that shows um, the, uh, he and his wife. And then what you, you overlay for combined it with a photograph that was taken in a park. And it, this is like a lot of layering here. And the park is where uh, the Rubios first met. And uh, there was an event the night before in this park, before the election night. And he was bringing the friends together. And I, I guess what was the vibe was in the air too is that we're not doing so well, we may be on our way out. So, uh, when I was trying to formulate a question for you about this, it's just, I, and you tend to do this, and I'm really impressed how you can kind of go the other way, but I have not seen, I don't think any photo I can think of out of the that tens of thousands probably from this election cycle where that had anywhere near or even approached like a, a kind of sense of empathy for these candidates. It's just been like this villainization uh, you know, the system's broken and these people are like, you know, taking advantage of it. And so uh, when I first saw this, I was like, Mark, are you serious? <laughs> and I was thinking, like, are you, like, you know, 
I give a name to Mount Rubio's wife, or like, you know, so, <laughs> so it, but the, the question is like, you know, it's a boy. What? It's a genetic boy, baby. <laughs> but what, what's, how are these guys supposed to relate to this? As opposed to like, you know, what you're trying to communicate. Well, I know that. Well, basically, I mean, it's really hard to capture some kind of private moments or emotions in this campaign. And I mean, I think we all know that. Like, it, it, it's tough because there's so many masks, you know. And me personally, I, I create intimacy in photography. I, I create a connection with people. Um, and I just felt a connection to, to her because we had, so when I was photographing in New Hampshire, um, I had spoken to her after he had given a, a speech. Um, and she was really nice. She asked me, I mean, I don't know how calculated it was, but she asked me about how I was doing and my family. And I told her, oh, I finally got in Miami, actually, where you guys are from. And when I saw her, and when I went to the HQ, um, to the headquarters, she remembered me and she remembered that my family lived in Miami, which I was really impressed. And I guess that relation between our families made me want to make this photo where it's, you know, I wanted to kind of empathize with her. And I, but I, want, I wanted to relate to her family situation. You know, they have all these kids. They, they go on the, the trail with with, uh, with Marco, um, and I thought it was really, in a way, sweet the way that they told the story about this playground where they met when they were kids um, in, in this very Cuban neighborhood in Miami. Um, and yeah, it was just this really private moment with her where she, you know, she was phone banking for the campaign. Some hours later, they dropped out, but. Um, Kind of felt connection at that moment. Um, and Candidates are people too. Yeah, I mean, she was she was, she was just really nice, and, and this and this one was another way for me to show Rubio without actually showing Rubio. You know, through memory, through the, the use of memory, through the use of um, history, and that's partially some of the reasons why I you know I've been doing this. Exposures is to play with these memories, play with um, uh, play with blending various elements and layers. Uh, did you have, you gonna say something? Or Hillary, please. Well, I just I remember when Mark was talking to her. Like I saw them. Oh. Far. Oh. No. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, it, it looked it looked like you could tell that like Mark was really interested in what she was saying, and then and that she. For whatever, like, I don't know, but it seemed like she was really like that he had made a very good connection with her. So, looking at this, like, you can definitely tell, like, a lot of different people tried to photograph her and like photograph the kids, but I think that it's great the way that that you really spent the time speaking with her and making that connection. Um, it certainly seemed to me like you guys, it's sort of brave, I think, and and, and maybe in a way it pulls us all back to like. You know, we are so jaded and we've been also stoked, you know, in our anger and frustration, but, you know, this does come back to, you know, I, I don't know, I, it's weird to use the word empathy and campaign 16. I, I, I can't really get that myself, but it is interesting to kind of push us back in that direction a little bit. Why don't we move on to, uh, I know we're running out of time a little bit. Um, let's go back to Scott's photo. Uh, and wow, you know, like if you just want to go crazy, like you know, in terms of symbolism, um, what, what, did, what were you? This was at a, was this at a Bernie event, or like a house? No, no, it was it was at a uh, Labor Day breakfast for union uh, workers and representatives in New Hampshire, um, and it was a Democratic event. And Bernie and Lincoln Chafee spoke at the event, and it was surrogates for O'Malley and Hillary there speaking. Um, and there was all this like beautiful food um, set up, and like it was waiting there for an hour, getting cold. Um, and then there was a lot of people here, and finally people were here, and they just attacked this buffet. Um, and it's, I mean, it's, these are these are you know big union guys um, who were waiting to get fed in the morning, and a whole lot of meat and potatoes. Um, and and so the symbolism there are, there are a couple levels of it. I mean, in one way this has nothing to do with politics, but in another way it, I feel like it has everything. Um, it, there, there's uh, on both sides. There's this uh, tremendous effort to appeal to 
uh, working class to real America to here now and again, um, and that's this meat and potatoes kind of thing. Um, and, and food is such this, this potent image that, you know, uh, Obama getting attacked for eating arugula um, in, in the Zebo <laughs> Yeah, and then you get into the whole thing on like one bar after another and having a beer, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. So you see food all throughout the campaign in, in many different ways, but in a way, and, and this whole metaphor that I use for, for my coverage is this the worst party I've ever been to, and it's just all this, you know, cold food just waiting to be eaten and nobody can, can dig in when they want to. Um, but, but the other thing too is that, and this is, uh, is going to get a little into the weeds, but uh, we, we, we have this idea that when there's things when, when we vote, there are things that we're supposed to do, we're supposed to engage with the policies, we're supposed to, um, you know, really investigate what candidates are about and what they've actually said with their tax policy, whatever. And that's like eating your fruits and vegetables. Uh, but what people really want to do is they, you know, they want they want anger and frustration, all that. That's how they make their decision. The red meat, right? right? Yeah, and, and exactly. And that's the you know the salt, the fat, and the bacon, and, 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 and the meat and potatoes. That really, I mean, like that appeals to a very basic um, uh, needs and desires. And it's like Matt yeah. like, yeah, Penny these piece the other day where he was like saying, "You people just want you know all of the dish, and you want the dirt, and you want all the trunk." Drama and like we can write all these policy comparisons and but you know you guys just you know he didn't say you guys just want the you know the bacon yeah and the, and the, and the, and the beans as opposed to you know eating your fruit but yeah no, that's absolutely right I mean, but and I wish I had thought of all of this when I was taking the pictures but it was just this really beautiful graphic thing um, and and I thought it was gonna be a really cool shot and then when I saw the person after person just going. Not even touching the fruit. It's a metaphor. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I just want to say that I, in terms of reading the picture, these two and the, the last one and this one and the next two you're going to show, they're they're all visually set up where they're you can't make sense of them. Like you think you know it, and then you keep looking and you notice something else that changes your opinion. And I just looking at the, what we have here at the second four pictures are set up in a really different way than the first four pictures. So I just wanted to. It's sort of like that photograph that everybody or a lot of people made at the Republican convention, where there was that mirror that was on the floor, and so many people took pictures that so made it look like a fun house or something. I mean, like or a, a fun like one of these mirrors where you know it's like what was real was surreal. You know, it's like it's all about the RNC is about distortion. You know, and this one I keep thinking about the placement of the strawberries as I look at it more. What does that mean? You know, it's like the, and the last one, you know, there's just, there's so much that the photo reveals as you look at it more and questions that it poses. So, and then I think the next one that you're going to show. Yeah, let's jump to uh, uh, Landon's photo. Uh, so this was um, set a scene from the floor of the 2016 Republican National Convention. Um, and I, to me, like when we talk about pictures being stories, to, to me, I don't know, it just be me, but this to me is, is feels like a story. So I'm wondering, you know, what story, if you were trying to tell one, you're trying to tell with this. Is this like the quintessential old GOP, you know, with the pearls and the, like Rockefeller, you know, pearls and the backroom deals, and then off to the right, we've got this guy, you know, with a Trump hat, and the party's walking away from all that. I did not see all that. <laughs> I mean, I I saw the pearls, and actually I was I was photographing the pearls, and then um, and then the guys came in for the handshake, and that was just kind of instinctual, and uh, I think that's somehow how I like kind of build a lot of pictures. You find one thing, and then you hope that. When something else happens, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it did, and that, that's what made the picture. Um, but, it, but it's pretty dark, right? Yeah. I mean, you you see a lot of this on the floor of the RNC, a lot of people who haven't seen each other since the last one, probably, coming together to, you know, hey, how's it going, how you doing? And uh, in a way, it's just a very sort of human thing that you do. But, um, I don't know, but it's also kind of dark. It's like they, they are there to support this candidate that's ominous and evil. And, yeah. 
Maybe that's, maybe that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, journalists are people too. That's just good, yes. Can I say one thing? I just, want to, I just want to say that what I love about your work and about this picture is how you compile body language. Um, there's something really powerful about that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the best hands on the hip of the whole campaign, too. I've mean, got two things to say about you. Uh, one that's really interesting is the on the right, you see the red hat, and that's the name of the great again, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and what's interesting is that the, the RNC is kind of seen as the, that's this point when the, the party, at least, was trying to wrest control over Trump's messaging. So you get to make America great again. You don't even see the slogan, you see it kind of fading into the background. Um, uh, whereas it's, it's the party politics that's really taking over here, so I think that's the most prominent. Um, the other thing that's interesting to me, the, the yellow name tag on the left, if I'm not mistaken, is a press badge, right? Because that's what my press badge is like. Um, and so you, you have this idea, the, 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 the sense of, of, of closeness and complicity between the press and the delegates and the, and the political party that that allows, which I think is kind of interesting. That's just, uh, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't notice it until I saw the big as well as here for the same picture plenty. No, thanks. I don't know, I can't see. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if Trump wins, I guess you know that this this icon of the hat, you know, I mean, how much was this hat, you know, this sort of like uh, foreshadowing of, you know, the, the apocalypse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so weird to see a guy wearing a suit, but wearing a suit. I mean, you, you never see that at a convention, maybe. Maybe never again. So let's, um, the last photograph, let's go back to uh, Hillary. Um, and uh, what, what's really amazing about this picture, sometimes like a caption it says this kind of magical thing, you know, where, like, how it plays with the image itself. Um, because the girl's name is Joy. So it's, the caption is, Joy runs with an American flag balloon along the barricades outside of the Wells Fargo Arena in Philadelphia. Um, I think the title's amazing. You know, you see this dragging along the ground of the American flag, these abandoned protest signs uh, for Black Lives Matter and also Occupy. Uh, it seems like she has blood on her knee, I'm not sure, but the, the question I asked, and a lot of your photos actually bring me back to the exact same question, which is, you know, can we still find hope and joy, you know, in the process this year? And you seem to find that in a lot of your imagery. And, you know, it's been such a, like, a downer. It's been so depressing and terrifying, this whole process. But, um, you know, is this playing? Is this like, you know, you know, good. There's there's good and bad in this in this shot, and and, and and also the way that you're looking at the whole experience. You're there week after week after week, documenting it. You know, it's interesting you say that because I um, never really considered that uh, the fact that maybe I am doing that because I seem to be someone who tries to find the, the beauty in in any situation. I mean. That's what I think a lot of photojournalism is, in many ways, is, is taking something that might not be beautiful and trying to make it so, or trying to present the information in a beautiful way so that more people might be drawn to it and want to look at it and think about it, right? Um, so with this in particular, like I met Joy a couple times. Uh, I spent the night at one of the camps at the RNC with a bunch of these folks. So they, uh, I'm, I'm also from Vermont. Um, so they kind of were like, cool, good to be hanging out at FDR. They're like, oh, like Bernie, you know? And I'm like, right, I met him when I was 15, does that mean much? No. <laughs> um, but they would like let me hang out with them. So I met Joy a couple times, like the mom. And, and as soon as I saw her like running there, it was right after, you know, a bunch of protesters were around being like, God, Hillary sucks. Also, fun fact, being named after Hillary Clinton, or not after, but like having the same name has been like a really fun uh, thing since January. I've never had so many insults in my direction. Um, but uh, uh, Joy, 
was just running, and uh, I felt like I'd taken a bunch of crappy pictures that day. So I was like, oh look, there she goes, and this balloon. Um, and so I chased her. Uh, and, and that's, she just, she wound up right in front of Black Lives Matter. Uh, uh, and there had been a small Black Lives Matter march that day, I think. But you have spent all this time to cover this week after week, and absorbing yeah. all of the, you know, negativity and you still retaining, you know, a, a hopeful sense, you're like looking for the silver lining and that's... Of course. I mean, the everyday is beautiful in its own way. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You just look for it. It's <laughs> so I think part of the, a lot of the power of this picture comes from her innocence and that, and that the Black Lives Matter side is being on guard. Yeah. You know, so it's a, you know, the composition just speaks so much. I'm sure that the placement of that sign was, was very intentional as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it be placed, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, you think about it and, like, yeah. why would they put it there? And, um, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Was that because they're the one group that went over the over the fence. I can't remember if this is that day. I know. I'd have to look. I don't think it was that day. I think that was a different day. But that was um, one of the. I'd have to look. Um, but, but it also shows how difficult it was for Black Lives Matter um, group to get recognized by Democratic Party. Oh yeah. Um, which is interesting. Although. Um, what, what's really interesting to me too is that the Occupy is just kind of laying on the ground and Occupy was such a huge force four or five years ago whenever it was and now it's just something that the kids want to go to nothing. Black Lives Matter, even though it's behind bars and even though it's having a hard time getting in, it's standing up. You know, which yes. is kind of interesting. Can I say one thing here too that uh, I wanted to say about Mark's picture too is that I love that both of these guys, these pictures are kind of the result of personal relationships that they had. And that often, any developer, uh, their, their work is, is the result of a sort of very personal um, experience. And I think too often it's, it's looked at as though you are this sort of objective journalist, but both of them told very personal stories about how these pictures came to be. And I applaud it. And I think that's an important point, and it's things that something that we don't think about. You know, it's like that you guys are robots or something. Like that. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, are, do you have observations, questions, um, thoughts uh, on any of the images that we've shown, or this one? We can move back and forth to the edit. Um, yeah, go ahead. very monotonous to cover all of these things all the time. And this has been going on now for at least 18 months. Forever. <laughs> and we all have taken very unique, different approaches to it and done a phenomenal job and shown us something very personal and a different dimension that all of you made. So I think you all deserve a round of applause for that. It's more of a kind of positive comment, but I think it's very interesting to watch how four individuals with very strong conceptual ideas about how they want to represent the process use the language of photography and the technical and aesthetic things that we have to control it with and make pictures that they think are relevant. Interesting that other people can be even more into than they can do themselves. And that is a process. It's really fascinating. So I think listening to each of you, I think if you each found something each other's work you didn't even know it was there yourself. And that's the great thing about photography. No matter how many layers we put into it as photographers, the world then can discover even more than we do ourselves. And I think that's a fantastic thing to commend you. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you for being here.